I have done is I've completely disassembled the clockwork motor from this here 1912 or so Columbia Graphenola. So what do we got? I'm going to cut myself off for a second here. After I made this video or shot the video and disassembled the unit, I discovered um, through information from Gary at ShenandoahRestoration.com, a uh, renowned source for parts for restoring Victrolas, Graphodolas, and similar units. This particular unit was built after 1915, and he figured that because the shape and style of the tone arm is considered a bayonet style, um, as well as the location of the needle cups, it had to have been after 1915. Um, what you see in this video is a complete disassembly and examination of components that I uh, pulled from the unit. And um, the shaft I'm holding right now is the main drive shaft. And uh, that's what drives the spindle. Oh, here we go. This is the, the crank shaft. Um, the crank screws into the end of the shaft. And when it's wound, it rotates the spring drum and activates the ratchet assembly. And this piece here is what I'm going to be replacing. The fiber gear that I'm holding on top is the wearable item that is available at Shenandoah Restoration for about $49.95. And the replacement is made of nylon, specifically for uh, restoration projects. Um, be sure to save the brass gear that it uh, mounts onto. You'll need that when you reassemble the unit. Um, as you can see, the teeth are badly worn in this gear, and the pin slot is actually damaged from when it cocked off to the side um, after the gears have worn together somehow, anyway. Um, so keep that in mind. I'll put the address on the... Uh, in the information of this video section it's against a small part of the gear and shears it so that's that's got to be replaced and I've got <clears throat> this gear here which drives the spindle um, from the directly from the spring mechanism has excessive wear along the uh, this half and above and um, I don't have to replace it, it'll still work without it, without doing that, but I would like to find another one. Um, but not necessary. Now this is the speed regulation governor. And how it works is it, uh, well, I'll put the camera down to show you. <laughs> Let's do that real quick. Put the camera down here. How this works is in normal operation, there is a series of felt pads. Actually, I'll show you those. They're right here in the, in the frame. Yeah, come on. Okay. Two felt pads mounted on this assembly that rocks back and forth as I can. These particular felt pads, um, it's very important to keep them clean, and I would replace them um, no matter what condition they're in uh, if you're planning on using the phonograph. Um, what you see here is the governor assembly. Now, as the springs, as the weights pull out, it actually forces the brake disc if you will, um, into the felt pads because it slides on the main shaft as I'll show you in a second here. Um, one thing that Shenandoah Restoration offers, if you buy parts for restorations, he'll give you the pads for free. So definitely keep him in mind. Um, he's very friendly to work with. Um, now this lever actually can adjust the position of the felt pads. For instance, if you wanted a, a, a faster rotational speed, you would move the felt pads away from the wheel so that it would take more force to pull the wheel into the pads. And that's how you regulate the speed of a phonograph. 
to remove the 100 odd year old Okay, first thing we've got to do is disengage the center shaft from the spring. That can be done with a flat blade screwdriver. Just pry between the spring and the and the shaft. And you want to allow the shaft to come through the cup, like so. Looks like this side's already done. Like that. Then you want to grasp the spring right in the middle. And this is going to go flying. Um, this is why it's so dangerous. I'm trying to pull the spring out like that. And then slowly allow it to unwind like that. Note the direction of the spring. This winds clockwise. And as you can see, there's a lot of filth in that cup. It's pretty nasty. Now, theoretically, the shaft should fall through. There's a... There should be somewhere here. A point where it can actually come through the cup. But I don't see it. There it is. There's the slot. But it doesn't go through because it's hammered down. What a mess. So now we've got to disengage the spring from the cup. That can be done pretty carefully. Come on, man. There we go. And that is how you take the spring out. Ta-da. Okay, once you've gotten your, your cups cleaned and greased, I use WD-40, it does a great job in dissolving the grease, and these, um, these shop towels by Scott they do a very good job of absorbing all this crap. So you take your spring, which is now thoroughly coated in, I'm using a white lithium grease. This is the fun part. You want to get it locked into the, the pin on the side of the barrel. Uh, this is real tricky with greasy pins, but... Alright, there we go. If it doesn't fully lock in, that's okay, because once you wind it for the first time, you'll be better off. It'll, it'll lock in. Alright, so we're going to wind the spring back into the barrel. Having it coated in grease does make it a little easier to get it in. Um, it is standing up. Okay. That'll happen. Alright, let's just separate these real quick. Yeah, it might make it a little better. We'll leave here. careful to wind it in the right direction. Once you get it wound the first way around, once you get it to a certain point, it'll just snap right in. We're getting there. And that is how you wind a spring. This is a dirty MFing job. Not for the 